Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the June 2023 Statistics S1 International A Level at Excel paper. This exam is, or this question is all about probability. It says the three events A, B, and C are such that the probability of A is equal to 0 0.1. The probability of B given A is 0 0.3. The probability of A union B is 0 0.25 and the probability of C is 0 0.5. Given that A and C are mutually exclusive, find the probability of A union C. So basically when two events are mutually exclusive, then basically what we can say is that um, they cannot both occur at the same time. There is no intersection between them whatsoever. Okay, so for example, if you are uh, picking one pick from a bag of balls and there's different color balls in there um, the probability of picking a blue and a green with one pick well is impossible or if you're picking from a pack of cards you're picking one card the probability of picking for example an ace um you know um and a two at the same time impossible because with one pick you're either an ace or a two all right but if it was an ace and a diamond well there is one card which is an ace and a diamond so they're not mutually exclusive you can't you can have an ace and a diamond at the same time but two events which are mutually exclusive there is no inter intersection between them so if a and c were mutually exclusive they would look like this if you drew them in a venn diagram like for example a could be the even numbers from one to ten c could be the odd numbers from one to ten there is no common numbers between them. Mutually exclusive. Okay. So in that case, we normally have an equation. The probability of A union C would be the probability of A plus the probability of C plus the probability of A, sorry, minus, sorry, the, in, the intersection between them. Take away the probability of A intersection C. So if they were, if there was an intersection, then the probability of A would be all of this. The probability of C would be all of this. And you have counted this part twice. So you have to take it away to give you the probability of A or C separately. Right? So basically, in this case, when the mutually exclusive, there's no intersection. Okay, when this is the case, the probability of A intersection C is going to be equal to zero. So it's going to just be the probability of A plus the probability of C. Okay, because this is zero which is going to be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.5. We have them both already in the question. So the answers for that is 0 0.6. The probability of A in section C, so A union C, not intersection, A in section C is 0, right? The probability of A or B, A union B, is equal to 0 0.6. So there's the answer to part um, A of this question number 6. Now for part B, it says show that the probability of B is 0 0.18. So we can think of this in a similar kind of way. We know that the probability of A union B is given to us. So I can I can set it up in a similar way to this. The probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, which we have to find, minus the probability of A intersection B. All right, so we know we know this. That's given. That's 0 0.25. We know the probability of A, that's given, that's 0 0.1. We have to show that the probability of B is 0 0.81, so we got to find that to show that. And minus the probability of A intersection B. So we need to try to find this with the information they gave us here. Now they gave us the information that's going to help us, which is this part here. We know that the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of the intersection between B and A, which is what we're trying to find to help us to put over there, that's the same as A in section B, over the probability of A. This is probability of B given A. It's like we have made the sample space A and we're finding the probability of B occurring, okay, um, given that A is a sample space. So for example, if we were to make a, a little diagram to illustrate this, okay, so say this was B and this was A, okay, so what we've done is, when it says given A, that means we've limited the sample space to just the set A. 
and the probability of b given a we're only looking at the part of b which is inside a we can't look at anything outside of a because that's our whole sample space so what's the probability of of something being uh, of, of b occurring when it's when a is given it's just this section here that's the only part of this diagram here which is highlighted which has b in it which is actually the intersection between b and a so this formula here will help us find what we're looking for okay because we know the probability of b given a is 0 0.3 we want to find the probability of a in section b it's the same as this same thing okay because that's what we need to put over there and the probability of a we know is 0 0.1 so we can say the probability of a intersection b is the product of those two which is 0 0.03 if you multiply them together so we're going to have negative minus 0 0.03 so now we can find what the probability of B is by rearranging this equation. It's going to be the probability of B is going to be if we, um, you know, keep this on this side, subtract 0 0.1 from both. Uh, sorry, we have 0 0.25 on the other side and we're going to subtract 0 0.1 and we're going to add 0 0.03. And that should give us what they're telling us probability of B is equal to. They told us to show that it's equal to 0 0.18. Let's see if that works. So you have 0 0.25 minus 0 0.1 minus oh sorry plus 0 0.03 okay so that should give us an answer which is 9 over 50 which gives us 0 0.18 which is exactly what we had to show okay so that we know that that's correct that's the probability of b so we use that same equation here except this time there is an intersection which we need to find and then we can find probability of b now for part C, it says given also that B and C are independent. Now there's a difference between independent and mutually exclusive. When two objects or when two, two um, events are independent events, then the probability of the intersection between them is equal to the probability of their separate probabilities multiplied. So if B and C are independent, the probability of B intersection C will give me the same answer as the probability of B times C, probability of C. Okay, so we want to draw a diagram. Now I'm going to use, and I would suggest you do the same, use a ruler. Okay, and also, even if you you can, take in with you, you know, a protractor, a, a compass. So you can draw some nice circles, which are neat. Okay, so we've got this circle. Okay, let me just choose it. okay so we've got these circles now we know that a and c never intersect okay so this is a this is b this is c they don't intersect a and c they're mutually exclusive but there is an intersection between a and b and there's an intersection between b and c okay um so we can work those things out because i already know the the I can work out what this, this part here is from this little formula here. We know the probability of B intersection C is the probability of B times the probability of C, which we already know, both of those. The probability of B, B is, um, we found it already in, we were told it in fact, okay, we can use that if, even if we couldn't show it, which is 0 0.18 times the probability of C, which is given to us as 0 0.5. Okay, so that's the probability of the intersection between these two, which is that area over there. So I can work what that is and I can find it. 0 0.18 times 0 0.5. That gives us 9 over 100, 0 0.09, 0 0.09. So that's going to be the intersection between B and C. We use the fact that they are independent to work that out. This is only true if they're independent. It's only true if they're independent. Let me write it neater. So we have 0 0.09. Okay. So that's the probability of B in section C. Now, once I got that, I can fill in the rest of C. Why? Because I know the probability of C is 0 0.5. So this part of C is going to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 minus the answer. Okay, which is going to be 41 over 100, which is 0 0.14. Uh, sorry, sorry, 0 0.41. Okay, that's the probability of just that C part alone. Okay, it's going to be the whole thing which is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.09. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.09. That's how we got that. All right, now let's move on to the other stuff. We know the probability of 
um, A in section B is 0 0.03. We, we worked that out in the process of answering this question. So here you're going to have 0 0.03. From that, I can work out the probability of the, this A part along. This is going to be 0 0.1 minus 0 0.03. So we're going to have here 0 0.1 take away 0 0.03 which gives us 7 over 100 which is 0 0.07 so we're going to have here 0 0.07 okay 0 0.03 0 0.09 0 0.41 there's this bit missing here which is the probability of b which we already worked out or we were told to find and we, we know it's 0 0.18 so this is 0 0.18 but take away these two Take away 0 0.03 and take away 0 0.09. That will leave us with this, this part in the middle. So we have 0 0.18. Take away 0 0.03. Take away 0 0.09. Okay, and that gives you 3 over 50, which is 0 0.06. So here we have 0 0.06. So our values are these that are inside the circles but there could possibly be something outside the circle how do we find that well we know that these must all add up to one so we're going to find one minus the probability of all of these added together so as you have 0 0.07 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.41 Okay, and that should give us the answer for the, what to write outside this, these two circles and inside the circle, inside the Venn diagram. Okay, so we have 1 minus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.06. Okay, how far we got so far? Plus 0 0.09. Okay, it looks like we've done a lot there. That's one, two, three, four. That's correct. That's all the amount that we put in. Okay, so that's plus 0 0.09. Okay. Um, and that's everything, I think. Okay, I know, plus 0 0.41, sorry. And close the bracket. So we have 0 0.41, 0 0.09, 0 0.06. 0 0.03, 0 0.07. Okay, all of that taken away from 1 and should give you what's left on the outside of the two circles, which is 17 over 50, which is 0 0.34. So 0 0.34 is outside these circles. Altogether, these should add up to 1. Okay, that's going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.16. That's going to be 0 0.25, 0 0.66, 0. So that's going to be yes. So it's going to add up to one. So we know we're correct. All of them add up to one. All right. So draw a Venn diagram to represent A, B, and C in the properties associated with each region. Finished. Okay. We've we've finished the question. These are the answers here. You can get rid of this part here. And those are the answers to the question. Okay. So I hope that was clear. Pretty simple one. Is there anything else associated with it? D. Nope. It's pretty simple. Okay, so other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here at the end of the um, video. Other questions from the topic of probabilities, okay, can be found in the in the uh, playlist for probabilities of F1 over here. You can also, S1 over here, sorry. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video that will be linked here showing you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.